The Open Source Initiative is preparing to finalize what they call the Open Source Artificial Intelligence Definition, a set of rules which AI systems must adhere to in order to be considered officially open source. And everything about it is truly peculiar. It's just super duper weird. From the fact that it considers no data to be open data, yeah, try to wrap your brain around that little logic nugget, uh, to the corporate sponsorship from corporations in the closed source AI business, to the anti-racist decolonizing consultant they hired to put the whole thing together. Decolonizing, that's a real thing in here. Th this whole thing is just plain weird. But first, a little background. The Open Source Initiative's claim to fame is that they are the steward of what is known as the Open Source Definition, aka the OSD, a set of rules which any software license must adhere to in order to be considered officially open source. Now, the OSD began its life way back in 1997 as the Debian Free Software Guidelines, originally written by a guy named Bruce Perens. Later, with the help of a guy named Eric Raymond, that document morphed into the open source definition. So it wasn't just about Debian anymore, and it was now about all of open source. At which point, the two men got together and they created the Open Source Initiative to act as a sort of certification body for the OSD. So a company or, a, or a, an organization with a new software license could come to the Open Source Initiative and say, hey, is this officially open source? Do we meet the guidelines? Do we meet your set of, you know, 9, 10, however many rules? And they could say, yes, stamp of approval, you are open source. Now, here's a little fun historical tidbit for you. The Open Source Initiative likes to tell a long debunked story about the creation of the term open source, which they know is historically incorrect, right? They say that it was created by a different person at a different time than it actually was. Now, that little tidbit isn't critical to what we're talking about today, but it's just plain weird, right? Uh, if you go to the article over at the Lunduk Journal, you can click on the link and, and read the whole story about how utterly bizarre that is. Anyway, I digress. Flash forward to today, and both of the founders, Perrins and Raymond, that came up with this whole thing, have been forced out or banned from the open source initiative entirely. They're not even allowed on the mailing lists. Now the organization, totally free from the influence of their dastardly founders, is looking to expand into the newly exciting and newly profitable world of artificial intelligence. Thus, the creation of the open source AI definition. So they went from just OSD, open source definition, to open source AI definition, OSAID. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Now, this is where it starts to get really weird. To create this new OSAID, the Open Source Initiative hired a person named Mayor Joyce from the consulting agency known as Do Big Good. Um, you can, I've got links so you can go check out Do Big Good and Mayor Joyce's work uh, all throughout the article if you would like to dig a little bit deeper on that. Now, why specifically? I ask, was Mayor Joyce hired to lead the effort to create a brand new open source definition specifically focused on artificial intelligence? Was it perhaps her extensive background in open source or, or likely her, her ex expertise in all AI related topics? Or perhaps it was simply her many, many years of work in software in general. Uh, no, it was none of those things. Because in fact, Mayor Joyce appears to have approximately zero experience experience in any of those areas. Absolutely none. In fact, the stated reason that Mayor Joyce was chosen to create this open source definition is, and I quote here, <laughs> this is real, this is a real thing. Mayor Joyce has, quote, worked for over a decade at the intersection of research and policy innovation, sorry, at the intersection of research, comma, policy, comma, innovation, 
and social change. Her work experience appears to be mostly focused on leftist political activism and working on Democrat political campaigns. As for the consulting agency, Do Big Good, their focus appears to be equally non-technical, with a focus on, quote, creating an equitable and sustainable world and inclusion. Uh, they talk about a lot about transformation, uh, and uh, we believe that the best decisions engage all stakeholders, particularly those excluded in the past and things like that. Uh, again, I've got links to all this, so you can go look at it all yourself as, if you want to. Uh, now, when Do Big Good talks about what skills and expertise they bring to the project, they mention things. I'm going to read them all to you because they're fantastic. These are all of the skills that this consulting agency, which was hired to craft this open source AI definition, bring to the table. This is the whole their whole skill list. This is their whole resume. Here we go. Center marginalized and excluded voices, value lived experience and personal stories, embody anti-racist, feminist, and decolonizing values. I read that how it's spelled. Don't, don't, don't yell at me. Practice cultural humility. Co-organizing and launch new initiatives. Okay. Create equitable power dynamics. Are trauma-informed and survivor-centered work virtually or in person. Now, now let, let's go back here for a second. Yes, they wrote the, wrote the word decolonizing, which is not a real word. We're going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume they meant decolonizing. Spelling errors happen. They just added a few extra letters in there and made a word that's not a real word. We'll assume decolonizing. Now, how does embodying decolonizing values help to draft a definition of open source artificial intelligence licensing? I have no idea. But apparently decolonizing and being anti-racist is important to the open source definition and to software licensing. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I, I can't tell you one way or the other because it, it, it comes into my brain and instantly my brain begins to melt. You'll note that the only software related skill this do big good company appears to have is that they can work virtually or in person. So in other words, they know how to use Zoom. That's a thing, I guess. Uh, in fact, this consulting firm only gives three examples of client projects that they've worked on, and the other two are non-technical policy documents for the government of Washington State. So they, they don't do tech work except for this, right? So why this agency and this individual was hired to lead the work on the OSAID is beyond baffling. Just the same, this appears to be part of a larger pattern within open source and big tech. Hiring extremely non-technical people who are political activist types to lead highly technical projects. It, it doesn't usually go well. Uh, see the, the, the Gnome executive director as one recent example. And I'll link to that in the article as well. Now, let's talk about the working groups here for a second. This is truly weird. Considering that the leadership hired to oversee the open source AI definitions creation is extremely non-technical and almost 100% focused on anti-racist and decolonizing activism, it's no surprise that one of the first steps taken was to create a working group, or working groups rather, based entirely on skin color and gender identity. I'm going to read the whole quote to you here. The next step was the formation of four working groups to initially analyze four different AI systems and their components. To achieve better representation, special attention was given to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Over 50% of the working group participants are people of color. 30% are black. 75% were born outside the U.S. And 25% are women, trans, or non-binary. Now, what does having... 25% of the people be trans or non-binary have to do with creating a rule set for software licensing. Your guess is as good as mine. Now, personally, I don't care. But from the very start of the OSAID's drafting, the focus was not on creating the best open source AI definition possible. It was on, and I quote, diversity, equity, and inclusion. The best and the brightest, not important. Meritocracy, thrown out the window. Ah, ha, ha, ha. But uh, uh, implement highly racist skin color quotas in the name of DEI? You bet. Lots of that. Let's do that. That's what they chose to do. Now, with that all in mind, perhaps it is no surprise that the OSAID is turning out to be rather bizarre. 
Case in point, the OSAID declares that the complete absence of data used to train an AI system does in fact qualify as open. No data is considered open data. If that sounds a bit weird to you, you're not alone. Let's, let's back up for a moment to give a higher level understanding of the components of an AI system. So their first major component is the source code involved, the second being the training data that the source code utilizes, and the third is the model parameters. So the parameters that the AI system uses against. If you have access to all three of those systems, to all three of those items, you can recreate an AI system, a fully functional AI system. Now, we already have the OSD, the open source definition, which covers the source code part, right? So we already have that, which means that the whole purpose of creating this open source AI definition is to cover the other two components, right? The training data and the model parameters. Because if it doesn't cover those two components, what was the point in creating this all at all? Because we already had the open source definition, right? So without an exact copy of the training data used in AI systems, it becomes impossible to recreate that AI system. It's simply how the current generation of AI works. However, the OSAID does not require that the training data be made available at all. The definition simply requires that, quote, sufficiently detailed information about the data used to train the system so that a skilled person can recreate a substantially equivalent system using the same or similar data. Okay, now at first, when you read that, it sounds kind of reasonable, right? Until you think about it for a little bit and you think about what it actually means. This means that an AI system would be considered open source even if it provided zero data used to train it. It simply must be possible possible for someone to use the closed proprietary data if they should happen to obtain it. Uh-huh. You following that here? It's a little bit weird. That's like saying, hey, my software that I just made, it's open source, but I'm not going to let you have the source code. But if you did get the source code, like through some espionage or you stole it from me on a thumb drive or something, you'd be able to use it which means it is then open source, but you can't distribute or modify that source because it's mine, but it's still open source, right? It's it, it, under, under, this, it, under this definition, the source code from Microsoft Windows is open source, right? Because if you could get it, you could recreate Windows. So it's open source. Aha, uh -huh. see? See where this is going? It, it's ridiculous. Now, an argument could be made that the source code for an AI system could be open even if the data is all closed, and therefore it would be open source under the old OSD, which is absolutely true. But in that case, why have an OS AID at all? Why not simply keep the existing OSD and focus on that? Well, I think we have an answer, a simple answer as to why this OS AID is so utterly strange. You see, it's the open source initiative is not a huge foundation, especially when compared to some, but its revenue is not insignificant and it's growing. In 2023, the open source initiative brought in a revenue of $786,000, up roughly $200,000 from the year prior. Here's some of their, their financials from their annual report. And who sponsors the open source initiative? Google, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, which includes GitHub, Red Hat, and many other corporations. Here's just a few, Bloomberg, Capital One, Cisco. It's crazy, there's a ton of them. I, I provide the link there so you can go check it out for yourself. Now, many of these companies, in fact, most, have some noteworthy things in common. And I'm gonna read them to you because they have all of these things in common and I think this tells the pretty, pretty clear story. First, they are all in the AI business in some way, right? different types of ways, but they're all in the AI business. Second, they make use of open source in all of their AI products in some way. They use, third, they use the open source uh, declaration, the, the name open source as a promotional and public relations tool, right? They talk about open source, they promote open source, etc. And they, in one way or another, work with a closed proprietary set of AI training data. Yes, even Red Hat. And then the final item, they all have significant diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Yeah. 
When you add all that together, this open source AI definition begins to make a lot more sense. It is, in short, an effort to create a certification which will declare all of their AI systems, no matter how close their data is, as open source, while simultaneously being run by a DEI activist organization with a focus on racial and gender identity quotas. It checks a whole lot of checkboxes all at once for a fairly low and reasonable price. <laughs> now, what impact will all of this have? Because while many may argue that this OSAID is simply irrelevant, it can be ignored by the broader and free and open source industry, right? We can just ignore this open source artificial intelligence definition. We can ignore it. That misses a key impact that is worth noting. That being the continued corruption of both the ideas and the organizations of open source. Not only has the open source initiative banned their founding members and rewritten their own history, they are now seeking to create a new open source definition which will allow for systems consisting primarily of closed proprietary data to be considered open source, thus making their big tech financiers happy. The meaning of the term open source is being actively modified to mean a little open and a lot closed. And many of the same corporations which are funding this effort are also funding things like the Linux Foundation. Which means this corruption and dilution of the concept of open source is likely to spread far beyond the reaches of one small but growing licensing certification foundation in the name of open source initiative. Also, apparently decolonizing values or something. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know what most of that's all about. This is a pretty crazy story to me. This is a pretty wild story. Where this goes from here will be interesting to watch. Over the coming months, sometime between now and October, I believe, the Open Source Initiative is going to be finalizing and releasing their final draft, their final revision of the Open Source AI definition. I don't expect it to be fundamentally significantly changed from the, the revision that I've covered today since they're already supposed to be like a month or two past their release candidate draft. Um, but they're going to continue to be arguing about it, I'm sure, for at least a couple more months. That that said, they've dug in pretty hard because there have been significant objections from within inside their own ranks about exactly that which we talked about here. That thing where if you don't have access to the training data, you can't recreate an AI system. That's been talked about quite a lot the open source initiative and the agency they hired to create it for them is not has not been willing to budge even an inch on their stance that closed proprietary not available data should be considered open source, right? They haven't been willing to budge on it, which tells me the companies that fund this are very adamant that that stays in there. So it will be interesting to see what happens uh, in the days ahead. Uh, thank you to all of the subscribers of the Lunduke Journal for making all of the work I do possible. And with that, Go to lunduke.com, lunduke.locals.com. I should tell you about things. There we go. That was the marketing pitch. Click on the links and subscribe if you want to. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes, I do declare, end broadcast. <laughs>